back to another round of Mount Visit on Gonzaga Nation. Zags come off another strong week, taking one of two from the Beavers in Corvallis and taking their fifth straight league series over the weekend down in Moraga. Let's welcome Zag pitching coach Brandon Harmon back to the show to give us a recap of last week and a glimpse into the clubhouse as we embark on the season's longest homestand starting this weekend. Brandon, welcome. Thanks, Mike. Fired up to be back. I know it's nice. It's nice to have you back. You know, now our show, our show is old enough that we can have repeat guests, which I love. That's good. Uh, no. You know, um, obviously, um, uh, a, a past seven days that has um, been a little um, more complex, a little heavier than we're, we're going to get into on the show. But uh, your boys, your roster, the Zags keep on showing up every single week. Last week, we uh, we walked into Corvallis and we beat them on Monday night, you know, uh, split the series at Corvallis, which I always say, if you go on the road and you're playing a top 10 team and uh, uh, that that's a massive win for the program. Um, and, and so tell us a little bit about how it was to go into Corvallis on Monday night and knock them off. Yeah. I mean, we've, th- that's been a program that we've had some really good battles with here over the years and, and we, we match up with them decently. And um, I think we talked the first time they got after us good opening weekend. And so, um go down there for a two-game midweek which is midweeks are always a little bit tricky and you know I think that's that's tough maybe for some people outside of the college baseball realm to why wouldn't you just throw your best guy on that night but you know we're we're set up to be you know your best guys go Friday Saturday Sunday and um so you're going in there with some of maybe your middle middle relievers and guys that have you know smaller roles and we had some guys really step up on that Monday night we got it was kind of back and forth I think both both dugouts were like holy cow this is going to be a bloodbath on both sides I think you know I think it was five to five after a couple innings there or six to six and then you know Jacob Rutherford comes in and hasn't had a huge role for us yet this year and just really settles things down I think he went four and a third gives up one run um, and then Nico Zaglin comes in behind him and and just shut it down for the last three innings and it, it was big you go on the road in a that's a great environment down there at Oregon State I mean they really have a fan base and to go in there and get a win, and they're obviously have have their ranking. I think they're as high as number two, and mm-hmm. that ends up being our highest highest win ever over a ranked team, which is that's a nice little feather in our in our guys' caps. And um, but it wasn't something that you went in there and you felt intimidated by it all. You know, we, we can play with those guys, and we're on we're on that stage as well. And so, um, and then you know they things didn't quite go our way the next night, but we competed well against you know came out with a big a big inning to start things off, and we just couldn't keep it going. Um, mm-hmm. Out of, out of coming out of Corvallis. No, I'll, I'll tell you, you, watching Jacob Rutherford throw the ball the way he did in an environment like Corvallis for a kid that really hasn't found himself, uh, I thought was just a little bit another feather in our cap, right? As we go down to playoffs, the big thing that, you know, obviously a pitching coach has to focus on, right, is pitching depth. And to know that we've got Nico Zeglin, who's starting to throw the ball really, really well coming off the injury from last year. Now you got a guy like Rutherford who's starting to show up in big moments. That's got to give you some confidence. Yeah, I mean, it just lengthens things out. And it's, I guess that's the one you kind of don't like going into those midweeks. You're like, man, we're, we feel thin because it's not always what's familiar, but it gives the guys like that a chance to go and, and have their moment. And now all of a sudden, you know, you get into a weekend series and now you have a little bit more confidence in that guy. And maybe you can, you can shorten the game a little bit more. You don't feel like you have to stretch somebody else out. And so um, that was definitely two really big, two really big outings for those, both those guys. Yeah. I'm starting to really like Nico's really coming on strong for the year. I mean, to watch his outings, I know he threw last night at in Pullman for a short stint, but the moments that I've been able to see him with my own eyes, that, that changeup is working extremely well. Yeah. He's, I, I think that's one storyline that we, we haven't even really talked about even as a staff, but, we're talking about a kid who had a, a lot of, I think it's six wins for us last year in a midweek middle reliever. He breaks his leg on a comebacker. I mean, that's in all the crazy things exactly. in the last 18 months. So he was a little slower starter, missed all the fall. Um, but he's starting to hit his stride. He is, he's got a bugs bunny changeup. It's not an electric fastball, but man, it's, it's a, it's a fun pitch to watch. Gets a lot of swing and misses. Oh, I know we were listening to Huddy and Hertzie on the radio last night. I was watching the feed on the, on my iPhone. And then I was listening to the radio with Hertzie and Huddy and uh, uh, Hertzie's in love with that change up. Yeah. I think he called it like three or four times over the radio. Yeah. Why not throw it? Yeah. Uh, it's one of those ones you, you have an idea it's coming and you just, 
it's got it's just it, it hits a wall and it just stops. It's a, it's a good pitch. Oh my goodness, tell me about it. But so so now we 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 split in Corvallis, right? Uh, the boys are, are are grinding through two games up in league, and now they they float into Moraga over the weekend, right? Which I always say we have everything to lose, they have nothing to lose, which is a really dangerous weapon to have. Uh, and the last time we spoke on this podcast, uh, we were talking about how uh, the pitchers were throwing better than the numbers might um, show them to be. Uh, we saw three great starts down at Moraga. How, give us a little bit of a rundown of how, how we came out of there winning that series. Yeah. Um, I mean, Friday night, Gabriel Hughes was as advertised, right? He's getting a lot of, and a lot of, a lot of mock drafts already starting to have him you know, as high as the first round. And um, that was first round stuff on Friday. I think he punched out 13 and seven innings and it was, it was dominant and it was, it was fun to watch. It was fun to be on the, on the side of, with him that, that day and we did enough offensively to, to separate and um and then Saturday was just wasn't our day we, we had a couple opportunities early um to score some runs and not tip our cap to the, their starter and we end up you know we scored two in the top of three and we ended up giving them three right back there in the bottom of two which was um that, that was a little bit frustrating we just we couldn't get it going off them and, and their reliever came in and did a nice job and so you know we didn't hang our head after that and that's the one thing is you're right. That team down there was, they're well coached. They're playing hard. Their record doesn't necessarily maybe show what, what they're able to do, but they're, right. they, they got just as many scholarships as we do and they're showing up. And, um, you know, Sunday was uh, a big day. I know we're not going to talk too much into it, but it was, there, were, there was a lot riding on Sunday. And so we went out there and uh, man, it was, it was a, a dog fight and, and Owen Wild, the young pup who's really stepped up for us, just gives us a phenomenal start. Um, and then went to our two, you know, pillar pillar of relievers, you know, Brody Jesse shut down seventh and eighth. And then, you know, we got our, we got our veteran in there in the ninth, Michael Spellis. And, we, you know, we have a two run lead and um, he was pitching with a little bit of an extra chip and he punches out the side right there. It was pretty emotional. And, um, but just from the baseball standpoint too, you get out of there on the road with, with you win two out of three and, you know, you could be a little disappointed that, you know, maybe you didn't sweep that team, but the formula to win this league is you, you just keep winning series and you just keep taking care of business. And, um, you know, and, and we, we definitely feel like, Hey, we're playing. All right. We're, you know, I, I say we're playing. All right. We're ranked number 12 right now in the country. We think there's another gear or two in there that we just haven't really been clicking on all cylinders yet for the last two or three, which is, I think a good thing. I think when we put it all together here and um, we're going to get hot here down the stretch and, and, and I think we're going to, you know, be able to go even get another, you know, another gear. So. I'll tell you, man, when, obviously um, as heavy as weekends can get um, to wake up on Sunday uh, with the youngest roster in the WCC. And I'll do my best to keep it together here. Um, if there's one word that describes the roster, it's determination. I mean, that there's just perseverance, determination. They are, um, uh, they are, they have a plan. They're sticking to that plan and they've been able to repeat it over and over again. And it, to hound on the, the youngest roster in the WCC on a weekend like we just had, um, where the, the programs dealt a, a tragic blow, um, uh, that that has to make you proud as a coach to know that this young roster is able to compete with what we that noise and still stick to what their plan is, and that is to win league. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the one thing is you, you're very proud of them, and you're you're extremely proud of our leaders on that team. We do. We have, we have a lot of new faces, but we have some guys that have been in, in the trenches, you know, for, for a while, the Grayson Sterling's, the Jack Max, um, Tyler Rando. I, you know, I talked about Michael Spellacy and mm -hmm. guys that, um, you know, we talk about, we just, just keep showing up and keep doing your deal and, and don't ride that roller coaster. And, and yeah, that, that was a big roller coaster on Saturday. I mean, if we're, if we're being honest with each other, um, but they were able to compartmentalize it and, and show up on Sunday. And I think we were all probably putting a little bit more um, pressure on ourselves than maybe you normally would on a Sunday. Sunday's on yeah. they are, they're pressure packed as it is, but, uh, but our guys, they, they did and they, and they played for each other. And that's our, our big thing is just keep showing up for each other and, and, you know, enjoy these moments when you always, the season's already flying by and you start to hit where, you know, you're going to have single digit regular season games left here. I think after this weekend. Mm -hmm. 
moments you have with this team. You have, you know, moments with other players at certain points, but with this team, we only have so many moments left. And so just enjoying each other and, and, and showing up and competing for each other is kind of a, you know, what we're hanging our hat on right now. Yeah. A little, little bit of bad luck down in, down in Pullman last night. I always say that if that's going to be a, a loss on the road, that that's not an awful way to lose. And, you know, to, when you're thinking about it, Wazoo's in the top 100 RPI, right. They battled well, they came off the university of Oregon series playing pretty good, feeling pretty confident. So we just couldn't find our way there. Uh, but I don't think that derails us in any way because we're, we're about to run into the LMU lions this weekend. Right. Yeah. And then it's uh, yeah, they're tied for second in league. They're two games behind us tied with the Toreros. But if you look at stats and you look at, and you look at games, I think it's a little bit of a tale of two totally different stories, but maybe give us a glimpse of what you're looking into going into LMU. Well, they're, they're a team that I give their, their, their team and their coaching staff, a ton of credit, you know, coming out of the non-conference, they were, they were struggling and they have, they've hit their stride in league play. Um, they've been extremely tough. And I think there's at least two or three games where big, big margins where they're down going into the last three innings and they keep fighting and keep battling. Um, I think you're going to see if you're out at the games this weekend, they're, their, their pitching staff's not overwhelming with stuff. They're going to, they're going to, you know, a lot of, a lot of off speed and, and, and kind of make you, make you be disciplined at the plate. And then they're scrappy offensively with a couple guys in the middle of the order who can, you know, we got to do a good job of, um, of being aware of. And so, you know, we kind of have this, I, I talked to the pitchers a lot about it, but nameless and faceless, you know, whether mm-hmm. we're at Oak state or you're playing team in our league or whoever, we just got to show up and do our deal and, and control our con- controllables and, and that's where we want to get back to what our identity is, both offensively and defensively and, and at the plate and just and just keep doing it. And that sounds I know it sounds really cliche, but that is the that is the game for us is just showing up and and, and being who we are. And so, you know, look, mm-hmm. we're looking forward to being at home. <laughs> I, I, we, I know the longest homestand. Can you believe that one? It was seven games. Is that our, yeah. is that our homestand? Seven games. We need to talk, to that, our, schedule, we need to, talk to that scheduling guy on, uh, <laughs> he's doing on that end. No, but uh, I mean, you look at it, right? LMU, uh, 37 home runs, right? And you look at that one stat and you go, oh my, right? Compare it to our 17, right? You look at that, that those are pretty legit power numbers. But then as a pitching coach, you also look at their, their strikeout ratio, right? And you start to say to yourself that uh, I'm excited to watch what uh, our starting rotation and our bullpen can do against a team like that, especially at home. Uh, as we creep into the final chapters of league play before we get into the WCC championship. So uh, uh, it, it'll be exciting to see what we, what, what we have in store for us at home. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Like I said, we're, we're hopefully, uh, you know, our last home stand had a little bit of snow. Um, <laughs> I think that deterred fans a little bit. I think this one, uh, we're supposed to have good weather. So we're really looking forward to, to playing in front of our people. So. And we're getting our rings tomorrow. Did I hear that? You guys are getting your rings. You're doing a ceremony. They are and it, like everything in this whole COVID era. Um, our 2021 championship rings showed up about four and a half months later than they were supposed to. Usually would have back in January, um, but they're here. Um, and so we, uh, you know, we're going to give them to their 2021 team uh, tomorrow night. And I, I, I know we weren't going to go down this path, but I will say one, one special thing um, was, was able to, was able to deliver coach Evans, his 2021 championship ring um, last Thursday. And so that meant a lot to us as a program. Um, and I can't tell you how proud he was. That was a, that was a special moment that, uh, we'll have together forever. And so, um, we're just gonna keep showing up for each other. That's, that's our message. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I know as I, we'll, we'll kind of leave it at this, uh, Brandon, that, uh, uh, go get another series win, right? More importantly, play for eight, yep. right? Yep. Get the job done, get the deal done, as he would say. Yep. And, uh, Uh, Here's to continued success for the number 11 Gonzaga Bulldogs. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Thanks for being on the show today, man. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you.